big thank you to the Pauline cheerleaders and mascot. How about that intro, Chuck? Yeah, another great intro. Thank you, ladies. Well, welcome to week four of the Tim and Chuck High School Football Show presented by Bat and Stevens Body Shop. We are here on location at Frickers. As always, we'd like to yeah. thank Megan for bringing us our, our wonderful drinks here today. And uh, Chuck, before we uh, head into this, let's uh, let's take a look at a little video our, our videographer Ethan Matson got at the Antwerp Pawning game last week. Let's call it the condiment race. That's right. How about that bacon? Man, he really got sizzling there at the end, Timmy. <laughs> Took it home. He took it home. You well, know, a little bit of fun there. Huh? Yeah, you can't keep pork fat down. That's good stuff. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, it's it's week four, like we said, Chuck. The, the season's about a third of the way over. Yep. Got some surprises out there. I, I think as uh, we head into week four, uh, maybe looking at uh, maybe three teams that we didn't think would be in the predicament yeah. they're in. Liberty Center and Archibald both winless, and Patrick yep. Henry with only one win. Yeah, exactly. You know, those are three storied programs in Northwest Ohio. And to think at this point that they'd have a win between the three of them, you know, is really surprising. But football's a funny game sometimes. You know, you have ebbs and flows with, uh, you know, your teams in and out. It's just surprising that those teams, when was the last time that uh, those teams had struggled that much? Well, you know, kind of staying in that same league, Montpelier beat Liberty Center last week. Yeah. And Swanton beat Patrick Henry. And, I mean, those were wins, <laughs> for, you know, maybe generational wins. Yeah, exactly. You know, those were... Montpelier and Swatton for the last decade or so, those were teams that you could chalk up a W, you know, without having to, to work too hard. But, you know, they've turned things around and uh, sort of a shift in the power there in the NWAL. Crazy, crazy. Well, uh, let's let's talk about our, our question this week. It comes from our friend Rob Lawson, yeah. who asks us, uh, what is it going to take to turn around Defiance's season? Yeah. Here, here's, here's uh, crunch some numbers, Chuck. I'm, yeah. a, you know, I'm a number cruncher. You're a number okay. numbers guy. They are averaging just under 35 points a game. Wow. If you're scoring 35 points a game, Ooh. you would think you'd be winning games. Yeah, doing good. Unfortunately, they're giving up more than 44 points a game, which oh, points wow. to their 0 and 3 start. Well, how about this? Ooh, all right. Megan's back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Thank you, ladies. Oh, they take care of us out here. That's, that's right. for sure. Frickers does it right. Does it right. So, you know, kind of getting back to Defiance, Chuck, what's it going to take for them to, to get off the schneid and get that first win? Yeah, you know, they just really have to get the defense going. They really got to limit, I'm assuming, big plays, uh, third down plays. You know, they, they just need to be better in those areas. Coach Beauty said it best last week, you know, he said, we were scoring a lot of points, but our defense right now, with the way they're playing, we're not going to outscore anybody. And that really speaks to, they got to get things turned around on defense, and really get after it. You know, I like to say the phrase, 1130. It's always 1130. You've always got to work on getting 11 guys to the ball for three plays and give up zero points, 1130. And they'll get it turned around, I'm sure. Uh, let's let's hope. Let's hope. Well, we've got GMC play kicking off this week, Chuck. But really, the the best two matchups are in the NWAL. Yes. Yeah, starting with Brian. You know, they've they've uh, 31 and four under Coach Kevin Klein. Wow. That's... Yeah. They're they're three and 2 and in the league. They head to Delta, also three and 2 and They've got yeah. uh, first year coach. Jim Kabuski, who's yep. a veteran guy, that's quite a matchup, contrast in styles. Yeah, you know, Coach K, he's been around. He's been to a lot of different programs. He's been to college programs, high school programs. So, you know, he's a very experienced guy. And uh, you're going to see a tale of two teams, sort of, so to speak, in that game. You're going to see Brian, who's going to spread you out, throw the ball around, distribute it to a lot of different athletes. Delta, they're going to line up double tights, double wings, and they're going to pound it right down your throat, you know. and. Uh, the, the rumor on the street is when Coach K, when he interviewed for that job, they said, do you know how to run the football? And he said, yep. And that's what they're doing. They're just running the football, running it effectively, and they're still scoring a lot of points. Staying in the NWAL, we talked about Swanton already. They're 2-1, two 2-0 and one, two and oh in the league. Yeah. They're going to unbeaten Wasion, 3-0, and 1-0 oh, oh in the league. Uh, Mike Vickers left <laughs> Delta, went over to Swanton. He makes programs good. Yeah, he does. It, I, you know, I don't know what uh, he puts in the water when he goes over there, but you know, his last several stops, He's really been able to, to change teams around and change, you know, just the focus and the mentality overnight almost. And and there's another team. They their their quarterback is playing pretty well, Bryce McCann. But yep. they've got three guys who, who with at least three touchdowns rushing the football. Yeah, and that you know, when you're looking at it as a defensive uh, coach and you're trying to scheme that, that that's hard to try to worry about who do I stop. Do you just pick one guy? Do you try to limit everybody? It uh, really causes a lot of headaches. And Wasion, they, they also lost a lot uh, from yeah. last year, but they've got guys like quarterback Zach Robinson, Nate Sunken running the football, uh, Jacob Newlove catching the football, 
and, and they're getting it done on offense and, and they're stopping people. Yeah, and Coach Coop the same way, you know, the more you can distribute the ball, the more you can show off all your athletes, the bigger headaches you give uh, opposing teams. Well, let's uh, take a break right here, Chuck. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Did you know that you can have complete access to stories, pictures, and the e-edition at crescentnews.com for just $7 a month? Become an online subscriber to crescentnews.com now by calling me, Abby, at 419-784-5441, extension 233, or visiting the Crescent News online subscribe section on the top right corner of our homepage. All right, it's that time, Chuck. Let's, uh, let's do the Rose Insurance Collision of the Week. What do they say about that, Chuck? Well, you know, Tim, they always like to say that a hit by any other name, it's not the Rose Insurance no, Collision of the Week. What do we got this you week, You know, this Chuck? week we've got it uh, from the Paulding County Showdown between Antwerp and Paulding. Uh, Antwerp's Mike Linebacker, Nick Barnhouse, you can take your pick. But either way, he's going to hit you like a barn or a house. Right here, he fills and just hands out snot bubbles. Feels like a champ, blows the play up to him. Yeah, Cameron Doster thought he was going to be going somewhere. Yeah. Didn't happen. Nope, sit down. Sit down. Big hit, nice play. Yep. All right, so now it's time for the staff mark play of the game. Comes from the same game, the Paulding County yep. rival. Paulding gets the ball in their first possession. Yep. Oh, the first possession of the game. Uh, they do a little jet sweep to Preston Ingle. Yep. Goes around the end, stays in bounds, right. and takes it to the house. First Tight play of the game. Right down the sidelines. That was a really nice play, way to stay in bounds. Puts Paulding up early, and they go on to win 45-15. That's right. That, that is our staff mark play of the week. So, where will Ethan be this Friday, Chuck? I don't know. Where is he going to be? What, you got to look for Ethan. He's sort of sneaky. Yeah, he, he shows up all over Northwest Ohio. Yeah. He's easier to find than Waldo, let's put it that, that way. That is true. Yes. He, he, he doesn't have a hat. That, that, that is correct. <laughs> that is correct. He is going to be at Holgate this Friday when Holgate yep. welcomes in uh, GMC perennial power to Nora. He'll be there videotaping that game. I'm sure he'll get lots of good stuff for us next oh, week. Oh yeah, that's going to be another great game. You know, the ranked Rams going over to Henry County. That, uh, Ethan does a fabulous job, so I'm sure he'll... I don't know what kind of races I'll have in Henry County, but I'm, it'll, it'll, be it'll, be, it'll be something. That's yeah, right. For sure. <laughs> yeah. we, we would like to thank our sponsors, of course, our title sponsor, Bat and Stevens Body Shop. We'd like to thank Frickers, of course, for hosting us. Uh, the Rose Insurance Agency for the Collision of the Week. Staff Mark for the Play of the Week. And uh, also, we'd like to plug our coverage of, of high school football at the Crescent News. Uh, look for uh, stories and, and uh, updates, scores, the whole shebang, Friday nights and into Saturday morning at www.crescent-news.com. And again, follow us on Facebook, the Tim and Chuck High School Football Show. Uh, we're on Twitter. Check us out. Yeah. We'll get be back. social. Check us out. Man. Yeah, get social. We'll be back for week five of the Tim and Chuck oh, yeah. High School Football Show. We'll be right back here. See you then.